Okay, now let's bring this back to the world of chemistry, okay? Um, let's say that we have 4.673 times 10 to the 11 atoms of zinc. And the question is, how many moles do we have? Now listen, look, look at 4.673 times 10 to the 11 atoms. That's a lot of atoms. Is it a mole of atoms? No, it's not. Because it's not times 10 to the 23. And if it was, then we'd have around, an at, around a whole mole of zinc. We don't. We have less than that. But how many moles do we actually have? It's less than one. What's the calculation? We have that many atoms of zinc, but we want to multiply it by a ratio where the atoms of zinc that we just talked about here will cancel out. And what do we want to be left with? Moles. Moles of what? Remember, that's the abbreviation. Moles of zinc. What's the ratio? Every time you have one mole of zinc, you got 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. Sorry, that's so small. But look, atoms of zinc cancel, and you're left with moles of zinc. So what you, in effect, end up doing is taking this number and dividing by 6.02 times 10 to the 23. What do you get? You get 7.7625. Mm, times 10 to the negative 13 moles of zinc. Now, of course, that number isn't good enough because we need to have the same number that everybody else in the world would have if they were doing this calculation. Everybody else in the world. Do you understand? Chem guy's half German, too, so he can do that as well. Now, look, if there's four significant digits here, which there are, and three here, how many are we allowed to keep? Three. That's right. This number has one, two, three, four, five right now, or six, and that's not good enough. That's yeah, that's six, five there. <laughs> so we've got to keep get it to three significant digits. So seven point seven six. Stop there. That number right there is a two. We don't round that up. We round it down. And so your answer is seven point seven six times ten to the negative thirteen moles of zinc. Is that less than one mole? Ten to the negative thirteen is a number less than one. It's not a negative number. That's a number that's less than one, greater than zero. It's supposed to be, because this number is less than one mole. So it makes sense. That's good. So we've been converting atoms or molecules to moles and moles to molecules. Now, how about introducing the concept of the mass of an atom and how many moles that that takes up, or how many grams are there in a mole. Okay, so on the periodic table, you notice on the top right hand corner of every element's little box that it occupies, you got a number there, which actually is an average mass of all the isotopes of that element on the planet. They're the, the number of isotopes and their percentages of how much they're found taken into account to make up something called the molar mass. Now, for hydrogen on the periodic table, the molar mass is 1.01. .01. That, that means it's 1.01 .01 grams of hydrogen. That's H, the H. When you've got that, you've got one mole of H. Now, what's the molar mass of water? Well, water is H2O. And H2O has two H's in it at 1.01 .01 grams per mole. That's how many grams are in one mole. Oxygen, there's only one of these oxygens here at a molar mass of 16.00 grams for one mole. One mole of oxygen weighs more than one mole of hydrogen. Well, yeah, because oxygen has more protons, neutrons, and electrons in one atom than hydrogen does. So if you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of each, oxygen still weighs more than the hydrogen. What's the molar mass of water then? You just take two waters at 1.01 .01 and add them to 16 on, uh, in your calculator, and of course you get 18.02 grams of water every time you have one mole, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of water. So it's really easy. You just look at the formula. So if I wrote a formula here, and the formula was as complicated as P4O10, tetra, phosphorus, deca, oxide, Take four molar masses of phosphorus on your chart, 30.97, and then add that to 10 
16. You can just punch that into your calculator as 4 times 30.97 plus, because your calculator does order of operations, 10 times 16. You got it. And most periodic tables, not all, but most, have two numbers after the decimal for every molar mass. And it's just like adding a whole bunch of masses together. And when you add or subtract, you retain the least number of decimal places. So guess what? It's real simple. Every molar mass you calculate, if your periodic table has two numbers after the decimal, keep two numbers after the decimal. Some people look at this and say, no, there's three significant digits, only keep three. That's not the idea. When you're adding or subtracting columns of numbers, which in effect we're doing here, you retain the least number of decimal places. So always just keep two. Now let's have some fun.